Pentecost. We'll be back here again in Sparta. The epistle for this 21st Sunday out of Pentecost is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6. Brethren, be strengthened in the Lord and in the might of his power. Put you on the armor of God, and you may be able to stand against the deceits of the devil. For our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the world of this darkness, against the spirits of wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the armor of God, that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and to stand in all things perfect. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of justice, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and all things taking the shield of faith, wherewith you may be able to extinguish all the fiery darts of the most wicked one, and take unto you the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And the gospel, I've taken that according to St. Matthew chapter 18. At that time, Jesus spoke to his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a king who would take an account of his servants. And when he had begun to take the account, one was brought to him that owed him ten thousand talents. And as he had not wherewith to pay it, his Lord commanded that he should be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. But that servant falling down besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And the Lord of that servant, being moved with pity, let him go, and forgave him the debt. But when that servant was gone out, he found one of his fellow servants that owed him an hundred pence. Laying hold of him, he throttled him, saying, Pay what thou owest. And his fellow servant falling down, besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he paid the debt. Now his fellow servants, seeing what was done, were very much grieved. They came and told their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord called him and said to him, Thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all the debt, because thou besoughtest me. Shouldst not thou then have had compassion also upon thy fellow servant, even as I had compassion upon thee? And his Lord, being angry, delivered him to the torturers, until he paid all the debt. So also shall my heavenly Father do to you, if you forgive not every one his brother from your hearts. Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. Father and Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. Today, a few considerations from the sacred epistle, St. Paul to the Ephesians. Be strengthened in the Lord and in the might of his power, put you on the army of God, you may be able to stand against the seats of the devil. You know that. Put on the armor of God. You know that St. Paul says, at the end of times, and we are in those times, they shall say, peace, peace, and there is no peace. And in the art of war, <clears throat> what's his name, the one that wrote the art of war, the Chinaman, Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu that wrote the art of war, <coughs> he says, when you are about to attack your enemy, when you are about to overtake him, when you are about to destroy him, speak of peace. It's the art of war. Now the devil says, peace, peace, peace. You know why he says that? Because when you are in peace, you do not put on armor. When you're at peace, you take not up the sword. And just like we have laws, laws in our country about gun control, developing. 
laws in Australia in 1993 or 1994, it was made illegal to have guns in Australia. Because after all, guns cause violence. You should not have guns, because if you have guns, you will, you will be violent. I believe it was 93, that was the year the law was made effect, and the guns were taken away from the Australians. In 1994, violent crime, robbery, went up by 400% in one year. There was a county in Georgia, I don't know if the law still applies, where it is illegal to not have a gun. Everyone must have a gun in his house. Do you know how many houses are robbed in that county? 0. 0.00. That's the average. The lowest theft in the United States is in that county in Georgia where there is a law that says you must have a gun. And we have the natural law you know that in olden times, a man would walk with a staff, a whist staff. When you walk with a staff, part of it is because, of course, it's a walking stick. Well, you would be trained how to use that stick. Because when you're walking through the woods, perhaps when a man sees you with that walking stick, he comes at you with a sword. And if you know how to handle your stick, you will pummel in the head of that man with a sword. <laughs> Well, you will break his sword, and you will make him unhappy that he decided to rob you on this day. Mm. When do we speak of peace? When do we speak of peace? The devil speaks of peace, but he is about to conquer the soul. The devil speaks of peace when he is going to pull out his weapons... And what does St. Paul say? Put you on the armor of God. You know, if you're going to go on a swimming trip, what happens if you decide to go swimming? You don't want to drown, you want to swim, and so, therefore, you put you on the armor of God. You put on the armor, you put on the helmet, you take up the sword, you put on your steel toe boots, Put on your chain mail and you go for a swim. It isn't going to be a very long swim. Because you don't wear armor when you go to the beach. If you have any questions, go to the beach. You won't see much armor there or much of any other kind of clothing for that matter. They don't wear clothing at the beach. So the devil says, in our times, go to the beach, take a vacation, retire. Retirement is one of the most disgusting things invented by modern man. Bishops retire, priests retire. St. Paul says, fight. There's a war going on. When I visited a 94-year-old priest in Poland a few months ago, born in America, but of both Polish parents, an American citizen, now come back to be a Polish uh, citizen as well. I asked him, what do you do at the age of 94? I fight the devil. <laughs> Does exorcisms every day, says the Latin Tridentine Mass. All he does is sit in his office and wait for souls that have met the devil to come by. When is he available? Approximately 24 hours from the average day. He's been thrown across the room by the devil, smashed against the wall, but he's still alive. And he told me, I'll take a furlough. I'll take a vacation the day the devil does. Well, the devil doesn't go on vacation. You know that we are in an age of vacations. We are in an age of retirement. We are in an age of peace. We are in an age of security. Because we have the greatest surveillance equipment in the world. We have got the best defenses. We have got the best army. 
Therefore, we need not worry because we are at peace. But what is different about our times? You know, when Jesus Christ was born, there was a prophecy. And the prophecy was that in the day of his birth, in the year of his birth, there would be peace. And Caesar Augustus was amazed. All the Romans did was fight everyone every year for almost a thousand years. But in this particular year, there were no wars in Rome. The Gauls weren't causing trouble. They've been causing trouble ever since then. But that particular year, the Gauls weren't causing trouble. The Germans weren't causing trouble. There was no trouble in the far foreign regions of the, of the Roman Empire. And he decided, we are at peace. That is why he chose to do the census. Because he thought perhaps this peace would be forever. It was a year of peace. But at the end of the world, St. Timothy, or St. Paul says to St. Timothy, they will say there is peace. They will talk of peace. They will say, peace, peace, peace. But what's the next verse? There is no peace. You don't believe it? Forget to lock your car. <laughs> Visit the inner city of any town. And if you really believe in peace, get married. <laughs> and after you get married, you're going to find out there's no peace. <laughs> So then you get divorced, of course, because you want peace. Well, then what do you do again? You got remarried. Guess what? There's still no peace. So you get divorced again. And you want peace. So you take drugs. Because after all, you need peace. It's called marijuana. Downers. There's drugs to make you experience peace. You want to sleep at night. But the TV is blasting. The radio is blasting. You can hear the neighbors having a marriage fight upstairs. Or a boyfriend-girlfriend fight since they're not married. And there's no peace. So you want peace. And you take a peace drug. And the drugs don't work. So then you go to a psychiatrist and a psychologist. You want peace. And they say you're fine the way you are. There's nothing wrong with you. You're wonderful. But you then go and look in the mirror. You find out you need a facelift. <laughs> find out those wrinkles are showing. You want peace. So you have plastic surgery. <laughs> but you have no peace. This is our world. A world in which there is no peace, but they speak of peace in the family. Why can't you leave the girl in peace so she doesn't like her husband? Let her change him. Why can't you leave the family in peace? They can't take another child. Leave them in peace. Don't make them have another baby. Why can't you leave them in peace? Why are you telling them that if they don't worship the true God, they will be damned forever? Leave them in peace. So speaks the damned. So speaks the devil. In our little crisis today, in our little parish, Father, why can't there be peace? Why can't we have peace between men? Why can't we kiss and make up? <laughs> well, there is only one peace. The tranquility of order that comes from the King of Kings. The tranquility of order that comes from the God of all creation. The tranquility of order that is only found when he cries out with a loud voice and gives up the ghost upon a cross. Where is peace? 
St. Thomas tells us, who desires peace, let him take up a sword. Mm. For what is the cause of war? St. Thomas Aquinas tells us the cause of war is peace. A man, for instance, would like his belly to be filled with a wholesome drink called rum. Or excuse me, much my parishioners in the past, a wholesome drink was called Mad Dog 2020. Mm. They liked it a wholesome drink because it came at a wholesome price, one that they could afford, a big plastic bottle. And they could get drunk fast. And very wholesome drink. And they wanted that wholesome drink called Mad Dog 2020. If you're not an alcoholic, you don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. Diesel fuel tastes better. And it's cheaper, too. Mm -hmm. And so they want peace in their stomach. But the trouble is that there's only one bottle left. And there's two people that's what we have, a war. Mm -hmm. Until one man takes it unto himself and is able to drink it and he has peace. As St. Thomas points out, the cause of all war is peace. For when something is taken away that we cannot live without, hypothetical case, our holy faith. It's hypothetical because it isn't real today. No one cares if their faith is taken away. But there was a time when they did. There was a time. There was a place. And so, we want peace. And what is that peace? You know that one day St. Lawrence, the great example of joy and martyrdom, he was so happy as they roasted him on the great iron. Because... He wasn't losing anything that he needed. Someone breaks into your house. As I used to say about the, the Buffalo Bills. There was a couple that went to a Buffalo Bills game and didn't want to go. They left two tickets on their windshield. They came back and the windshield was broken. And there were four tickets sitting on the dashboard. They didn't want to go. Nobody wanted to go. So what is it that we're after? What is it that we want? What are we after? We are after the peace of Christ that is inside of the heart. We are after the peace of God. That means that we want the tranquility of the order of God's faith. Inside of my heart and my mind. And if someone attacks it, if someone tries to remove it, out comes the sword. Now here's the problem. There is someone called Lucifer, Lucifer, Satanas, Satan, Beelzebub, the devil. And what does he want to do? He wants to take the faith away from every man, woman, and child on the planet. He wants to destroy the kingdom that God created. He wants it ripped apart. He wants it ruled by the Lord of the Flies. And he is always waging war. Therefore, if we love the peace of God, you put on armor. You only put on armor when you recognize the devil is coming. The enemy is coming. The war is here. They are attacking. You don't put on the armor if there is no fight. Therefore, St. Paul says, put ye on the armor. Put ye on the armor of God. To stand against the deceits of the devil. Because right now. He is trying to deceive every one of us. He has deceived the Pope. He has deceived the bishops. He has deceived the vast majority of the priests. He has received, deceived 7 billion people on the planet earth. Almost all men upon the planet. 
And our Lord Jesus Christ tells us at the end of times, he will deceive, if possible, even the elect. We are at the end of times. The world will not end tomorrow. But we are at the end of times. Therefore the devil is trying to deceive, if possible, even the elect. What are we to do? Put on the armor of God. For our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the world of this darkness, against the spirit of wickedness in high places. What's the trouble of the war? The ladies today are waging war against wrinkles. One of the priests said recently to one of our faithful, it's okay to use uh, oil of ole or whatever version is made from aborted fetuses, so long as it's only one fetus. Besides, he's dead. Generally, someone who's murdered is dead. Before you can have a trial, they have to be dead. It's okay to use the oil of ole that comes from aborted fetuses. Plastic surgeons. What are they fighting? They're fighting the war of the flesh. They're fighting for peace of the flesh. And peace of the flesh means you better take the right diet pills. Peace of the flesh means you better wage war against wrinkles. Peace of the flesh means you need to be healthy. Peace of the flesh means you need to have health insurance and make sure you got the best doctors to take care of you. Peace of the flesh means you better put your children in the right schools so that they can become successful businessmen and business B-I-T-C-H. That's what we need. That's what we need. We don't need women that are going to waste their lives with babies. We don't need men that are going to fight for an old religion that evolved into decay years and centuries ago. We believe in evolution of man. We believe in evolution that comes from the Big Bang, which is hell. We believe in Satan. We want the kingdom of Satan to make our flesh live forever. The wise woman, Elizabeth. Good Queen Bess. She wanted reign and power for 40 years over England. So she sold her soul to Satan for 40 years of good health. For 40 years of powerful reign. And so she reigned 40 years. She began her reign in lies to Philip II. She began her reign in deception. Getting the protection of the Catholic king who believed her. And she was so good at lying. He believed her. He supported her. And then he found out too late. She was a liar. And a wicked woman. She reigned 40 years. She had the peace of the flesh. Read about her death. As she cursed God. As she screeched in despair. As she cursed the devil. That made her have those 40 years of reign. And without God. She left God, and she now burns in hell forever. So much for the peace of the flesh. Now all the men in the world want the peace of the flesh. And they say, peace, peace. They want airbags in their car, so they can't die in a car accident. They want the most safe vehicles. Because they don't believe in the peace of the God. They don't believe in the peace of the faith. And therefore they are not concerned when their faith is taken from them. And what of these Catholics? Have they put on the armor of God? No, they have not. No, they have not. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. But the spirit of wickedness, of this darkness. You know about this darkness? Walk outside. What do you see? Lights. What about at night? They have floodlights. They have headlights. 
The modern world has given us many lights, more lights than were in the days of St. Paul. But what did St. Paul say? Our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the world of this darkness. This world is dark 2,000 years ago. And we think they turned on the lights. The light of the fire of hell, maybe, which is a dark light that gives not light. We are in the world of this darkness. Go outside. Talk to the souls. Speak to the man in the streets. Talk to the priest. He is in darkness. Talk to the bishop. He is in darkness. I have spoken to bishops. I have spoken to priests. One bishop told me, or not just one bishop, several bishops told me. I asked, what do you believe? Do you want to know what I believe? Check them with Rome. Mm. One bishop said, okay, let me know. Mm. Many priests told me the same thing. You want to know what I believe? Check in with the bishop. And can you come back and let me know? Just so I know what I believe. They are in darkness. And I speak to my own superior, Father Stalin in the Philippines, or rather in Singapore, my new boss. I am the mouthpiece of Menzingen. I say what they say. What are they going to say? Don't know, I'll let you know. I have to wait till I hear the next word. It is the spirit and the rulers of the world of this darkness. And so, what are we to do? It's darkness all around us. We go back to the very beginning. We go back to the very, very beginning when Jesus Christ won a battle. In the middle of the night. He conquered Satan in the middle of the night. He fought him in the night. At three in the afternoon. He conquered him in the night. At three in the morning. And he rose from the dead. And he died on the cross. In the night. And darkness came at his death. Darkness was wiped away at his resurrection. But he came in the night. The devil is the expert of fighting in the night. You want to fight in the night? We go into the night. How do we go in the night? We go like Gideon. He did not walk into the night. With night vision on his rifle. He walked into the night with a clay pot. So easy to break. He walked into the night with 300 fellow soldiers. Who all carried clay pots. What are you ladies going to the well? <laughs> Imagine seeing those men, 300 men carrying clay pots. We see it in India. We see it in other places of the world, even today. The women carry the clay pots. Men don't know how to do it. <laughs> so they picked up the clay pot and they went in. Men carrying a clay pot. What are you, a soldier? They had a trumpet wrapped around their shoulders. Inside that pot was a light. <laughs> When they walked in the camp, the light could not be seen. Because they knew it was dark. And the priest of God is supposed to carry that light in a clay pot. What is this clay pot? It is our foolish, weak flesh that is so easy to break. And the trouble with it, if it's filled with ourselves, it's just like water filling that clay pot. Put fire into the clay pot filled with water, and what will happen? It will go out. We have to fight this darkness with a clay pot. Inside that clay pot, we carry a light. I want to Jesus Christ say, You are the light of the world. It is not any light the modern world offers. There is only darkness in this world. You are the light of the world. When Francis Xavier, the great saint, came to India, and when Thomas, the greater saint, came to India, what did they do? They brought the light with them into a land of darkness. And when the first missionaries came over here to America, what did they do? They brought the light into a land of darkness. And behold, now the whole world is dark. The whole world is filled with darkness. And we must bring the light. Therefore, take unto the armor of God, and be able to resist in the evil day, and to stand in all things perfect. Stand therefore, having your learns gored about with the truth. 
your, your loins with the truth. He says, unwise. So very unwise. Who girds his loins with the truth? If you're going to do a business deal, you've got to start with a lie. If you want to sell something for $100, what do you say? It costs $150, and I'm not taking a penny less. <laughs> You want to buy it for a dollar? What do you say? I'm paying fifty and not a penny more, son. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's got to be a hundred and twenty-five and not a penny less. Yeah, I'll take seventy-five and not a penny more. <laughs> How about a hundred bucks? Okay, we got a deal. Mm. You always start with a lie. Mm. Always start with a lie. Mm. But it says St. Paul today. We are girt with the light. The loins are girt with the truth. Christ doesn't start with a lie. We don't start with a compromise. We start with the truth. Going to girt about with the truth and having it on the breastplate of justice. Justice is the worst way to defend yourself. Mm. Be honest and just. You'll be thrown in prison. If you don't believe that, try the court system in America. Mm -hmm. Who wins? Always the unjust. But he says, if you want to fight for God, gird your loins with the truth. Put on the breastplate of justice. We must follow the law of justice in a world that is unjust. In a world of liars, how can you win unless you lie? In a world of thieves, how can you win unless you fight like a thief? In a world of those that do violence unjustly, how can you fight by just violence? You can't win if you're just. But St. Paul says you can. Let your feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We are lambs going to the slaughter. But who shall die? Who shall be slaughtered? The lamb goes to the slaughter, and in the slaughter he finds his victory. And when the lamb goes to the slaughter, in the slaughter it finds that the enemy of God somehow dies. And so a shepherd with five polished stones goes like a lamb into a fight. But Goliath dies anyway, somehow, by the hand of God. So what are we to do? We must be lambs, carrying the gospel of peace in a place filled with war. And that's our weapon. The foot soldier walks as Christ walked. And to which direction did he walk? To the rock of Calvary. That's where he walked. He walked amongst his enemies. He spoke openly in the open places. Remember when they captured him on Holy Thursday night and Good Friday morning? He said, why are you asking me what I taught? Why are you asking me what I believe? Ask them. I have spoken in the open places. I have spoken in the market. I have spoken in the temple. Don't ask me what I taught. Ask them. They know. For I did nothing in secret. Now that's always foolish if you're at war. You must have secret plans. But St. Paul said, walk in the gospel of peace, which has no secret plans. And the Holy Mother Church tells us, if you belong to a secret society, which has secret plans, whether they're good or bad doesn't matter, you're excommunicated. We don't believe in secret plans. Let the devil make his secret plans. The follower of God does not. And in all things, take up the shield of faith. What a shield. Do you walk across a minefield? Not without a mine detector. Not with all the experts checking it out. What if Christ says, walk? I will walk across the minefield. And I shall not step upon a mine. Because I have the shield of faith. That shield is invisible. 
but somehow it protects us. Do we believe the power of God? Is there a one who is not even a Catholic? General Jackson in the Civil War. Why are you not afraid in battle? He said, because God chose the moment of my death, not the enemy. Are you afraid when you go to bed at night? No. Couldn't you die in your sleep? Yes. So then why aren't you afraid when you go to bed at night? Hmm. Well, I don't know. It doesn't seem dangerous. But God can take me in my sleep. He can take me when I walk down the steps and trip. Am I afraid when I walk down the steps? Am I afraid when I go to sleep? And why should we be afraid in a battle? Hmm. God has determined the day of my death, not the enemy. That's the shield of faith. We find more faith in the Protestants. We find more faith in the atheists. We find more faith in the enemies of God who follow Satan than we find in his friends. And so we must have the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit, the helmet of salvation. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You know, no one wants to hear the Word of God anymore. It just isn't popular. It really isn't. But it is this sword that vanquishes the enemy. And so we must pray to God that He send laborers into the harvest, and that each of us, according to our duty of state, Wears this holy armor. Swings that holy sword. Daniel was not a priest. Daniel was not a judge. Daniel was a little bitty boy. But when he saw Susanna going to death by the wicked judges. He said she's innocent. And he spoke the sword of truth. And they said, what should we do? He said, I will judge the judges. And he spoke the sword of truth. So the sword must be spoken today. <clears throat> the sword of truth will kill the enemies of God. For the devil cannot defeat the truth. But if we try a secret way to defeat the devil, we shall be destroyed. If we try the weapons and the armor of the flesh, we shall be destroyed. <clears throat> And so let us beg the grace to truly put on this sacred and holy armor to resist the deceits of the devil and the rulers of the world of this darkness to stand in the evil day and swing the sword of truth. We beg the grace to always swing the sword for at any moment we can stop swinging it, any one of us, the priests and the faithful alike, and the bishops and the pope, and they have stopped. But let us continue until the day of the victory of Mary. And let's beg the grace that he send us priests, bishops, pope, who will swing the sword of truth and carry that invisible shield of the thief and go fearlessly into battle against the enemies of God to preserve the peace of God which we cannot be without. And to hell. With the peace of the flesh. And to hell. With the peace of the world. Which is where it goes anyway. We're just making the announcement. <laughs> and so let's have confidence in God. And beg of him to give us this our holy armor. And ask Mary. To be our armor bearer. And dress her. Let her dress us in the armor. And send us out to battle. Those thank God bless you all. In the Father, and the Son, Holy Ghost. Amen.